let's do it um just obviously for mic purposes uh try and speak loud and as clear as you can please all right okay vera let's dive in thank you first of all for taking the time to uh sit down with us and, and answer some questions i know you're obviously very busy um we don't want you doing lots of interviews because you uh you're busy in the lab which is exactly where you should be uh, but yeah thank you very much for taking this time oh well, my pleasure um okay first question how long have you worked within the field of aging research and longevity and which areas do you specialize in well i've been in the field for more than 20 years it's even scary to think how many exactly uh but uh, since uh I completed my PhD. I started researching the field of longevity. Um, I specialized in several areas. Uh, I started, oh, I apologize. Uh, I started them in the field of senescence uh, and then uh, genome stability, DNA repair. Um, I started working on sirtuins. It was sort of serendipitous transition from DNA repair when we found that sirtuin 6 plays a very important role there. Uh, and comparative biology, where we study animals that are naturally long-lived and uh, we, with the goal of understanding the mechanisms and then translating it to human health. Excellent. Uh, your favorite animal is the naked mole rat, is that right? Well, one of my favorite animals, naked mole rat, but uh, lately we've been working with other long-lived animals, including the bowhead whale, which is the longest-lived mammal on Earth. Nice. Very good. Well, I'm sure we'll get into that shortly. Um, which supplements do you take personally to promote healthy aging? Well, I'm, I'm taking Fucoidin, uh, the sirtuin 6 activator, uh, yep. and... Um, I'm taking uh, ginseng uh, because uh, I think there is a lot of um, traditional medicine that backs it up. Uh, and then for the most part, I'm just trying to follow healthy diet recommendations. Excellent. Good stuff. What do you enjoy most about working with do not .org? Well, I... I think you are good people, <laughs> so I enjoy <laughs> that. Uh, and yeah. uh, transparency and uh, staying up to date with current research. So I think this is a good example. Uh, and uh, of course, I enjoy working together in um, you know our effort to set up clinical trial uh, for Fukuidin in healthy people. Exactly. Um, how valuable has do not age .org been in supporting your trials and your work? No, you've been great. Uh, we had, uh, we've been having some hurdles, uh, but I hope we'll overcome it together. Yes, exactly. The, some of the human trials are taking longer than expected. And we've had a few, um, uh, like you say, hurdles along the way, bumps in the road in terms of getting them done. It's much more difficult to get a human trial done than it is a mouse trial for example yes absolutely and uh, we want to do it right uh, we want to have a placebo controlled uh, randomized trial and uh, of course the regulatory process takes time but uh, we'll get there very much time and i'm so impatient as well so <laughs> <laughs> yeah this is one point yeah, being impatient but you know i understand you but right science yeah. very often takes longer than we would like uh exactly. and that, that's <laughs> that's part of biomedical science that <laughs> things are not as quick <laughs> exactly so speaking of my impatience um when is the mouse uh, trial for cert 6 going to be published well I, I very much hope that we'll publish it before the end of this year um again you know I, i'm as impatient on this one we had the result uh which the most important result we see lifespan extension uh with the supplement uh we see improvement in frailty in score uh improvement in uh, methylation clock but uh, again, we want to do it right, 
and uh, there was still some controls there there are still some little gaps we are trying to fill in the story um but i think we are getting very close already finalizing the figures um and i, I hope it to be published uh, well we hope to submit it next month but you know it's, it takes time for the paper it needs to be peer reviewed but we'll post it on bio archive which means like once we have it ready so we'll post it and people could access it and then you know peer review can take longer yes and as soon as it's posted we will email out to all of our members so they can have a look mm -hmm. as well themselves there are lots of companies and organizations that wanted to work with you so what made you decide to join do not age .org? well i think we, that was a journey for both of us when um, we started working together early on when uh, we were exploring uh sir two and six activators and um, i think it turned out to be a very good collaboration between us i agree i agree and i think um we were we both had the same aims and we mm -hmm. both had the same sort of moral value of we need to bring this to people but we also need to further the science at the same time and so it's kind of like a it's an ever-evolving science of longevity so i think we work together well like that. yes exactly that was the part i really enjoyed that you were interested in supporting first our mouse trial and now uh, the human trial uh not just you know selling the supplement but actually testing it uh, seeing whether it works or not and at that point we we didn't know we had in vitro data that it activates cert six but when we started working together we didn't know if it will uh help the mice but then you know we were just very fortunate that it did and i, I think that gave it was fantastic us, yes <laughs> more confidence okay so what is a sirtuin and what role do they play in the aging process? Uh, sirtuins, so there are seven sirtuins and uh, we are primarily focusing on sirtuin number six and like say why six? <laughs> so, some time ago we tested uh, all of the uh, sirtuins for their potential in activating um, genome stability or main repair of DNA. Uh, and sirtuin 6 was the only one that was a very strong promoter of DNA repair. So we started focusing more on it. Uh, and then also sirtuin 6 uh, has the strongest uh, uh, longevity-related phenotypes. If you overexpress it in mice, they live longer. This hasn't been observed for other sirtuins. Um, or at least not, not, not to the same uh, extent. Um, so sirtuin is an enzyme, it is mainly located in the nucleus of the cell um, and it helps um, arrange DNA, chromatin, uh, in it. It also helps silence regions of the DNA that need to be silenced, like some junk DNA, transposons that are parasites within our genome. It, it also helps um, keep certain genes active, especially genes involved in dealing with stress. So it's a chromatin factor. Uh, and uh, when we get older, our chromatin organization starts to deteriorate, uh, like everything. So here, some extra boost of sirtuin 6 can actually reverse this process. And that's where it becomes important for longevity. Excellent answer. Thank you. How do you ensure that CERT6 activator actually activates CERT2 and 6? Yes, so we developed um, uh, in vitro assays for that. Uh, we have purified CERT2 and 6 protein, and it has several enzymatic activities that we can measure. Uh, one activity that is, you know, the most commonly known is deacetylation so we can give it a substrate protein usually a histone which is uh, like this unit uh, of chromatin where dna is wrapped around the histone uh, and sirtuin 6 can remove acetyl group from it so we can measure that 
but sirtuin 6 has another activity which is called mono EDP ribosylation where it removes the ribose group from proteins uh, and we found that in human centenarians or people who live more than 100 this second activity is enhanced not the first one but the second uh, and uh, our group is one of the few that can measure this activity because we developed our own in vitro assays for measuring it. Uh, so we again take our purified sirtuin 6, we give it a substrate that can uh, measure um, ribosylation or addition of this ribose group uh, to proteins and then we can quantify it. So we measure how much ribose was added without uh, fucoidin and then we add fucoidin and then we measure it again and we see if there was an increase that means it's a good activator um, we can always see no change which means it doesn't do anything or we can see it actually makes it worse so some chemicals can make it worse so this is our test and we applied this test uh, to fucoidin and then also to fucoidin whatever we put in the mouse trial and um, Fucoidin that will be used in clinical trials as well. Yes, excellent. And I think the, the thing to make clear to, to people here is, you know, the reason we don't just have normal fucoidin is because, as you said, some of some fucoidins will, uh, you know, not do anything to CERT6 and sometimes it will activate CERT6 uh, very strongly. And so that's why we send it to you for testing first before we turn it into a a uh, product for the consumer and before we send it into the clinical trials. Right, so that's an important point because fucoidin is not a, a, a simple molecule where you would say, well, as long as you have the purity, it should work. It's, a, it's produced by algae, by the plant. Uh, and um, the formula, it contains of monomers of fucose sugar, which may be interspersed with the galactose or other sugars. It can also be sulfated on certain residues. It can be uh, linear or branched. Um, so even though all of these, this family of molecules is called fucoidin, but they differ from one another and it's not very easy to control <laughs> what you get. Yes. So the best way is to just test it after it's been extracted from the algae exactly and you guys do a great job of that so thank you um okay in your opinion what are the main benefits of activating so two and six both short and long term well i can talk about what we saw in the mouse trial well i wish we'll have what? the human data i hope we'll have it soon and then they, we can more <laughs> confidently talk about human benefit but for the mice, uh, what we observed uh, was reduction in overall frailty. So that would be, um, you know, quite generalized effect. Uh, maybe more energy in that these mice had. Uh, also, the cold condition was improved. And um, for people who have domestic animals like cats or dogs, you know that their cold condition means a lot. Just when the animal is healthy, it has nice shiny coat that reflects multiple physiological processes. And that's what we saw for mice that were taking fucoidin. So their cold condition was much better, uh, which may be a little bit difficult to kind of pinpoint exactly, but it's like very generalized health. Uh, then, um, immune system so we saw a much better immune function and lower inflammation which is super important for aging because uh, inflammatory processes really flare up uh, as we get older so these were kind of sort of phenotypic benefits that we saw uh, we also saw a reduction of uh, methylation clock age uh, in these mice um, and um, yeah, generally longer lifespan. <laughs> well, you can't ask for better than that. So, excellent. Thank you very much. Um, main complications in human studies, we've covered that. So I'll move on to the next one, which is, what studies have you got planned for the future? Well, first of all, the clinical trial. Uh, then, you know, what we are planning for the future with Fukuiden uh, we would like to identify the functional 
unit of it because as i said well it's a complex molecule and uh, of course we can test it uh, but we would like to know what is the minimal functional unit of fucoidin uh, we know this is not fucose uh, we have tested it, and just fucose alone doesn't activate sirtuin 6. There doesn't seem to be much benefit of it either. Uh, so it is a more complex uh, molecule, and uh, we want to find what it is, and that could potentially make a more potent product. Excellent. Okay. Do you think one day we will solve aging completely? Well, I guess it depends what you define as completely. <laughs> you it's know, a bit I of a fun one, this one. Yes, in in terms of achieving immortality, I don't know whether it is possible or desirable. Um, but I think what we will eventually achieve is to provide people much um, better experience uh, and much better health. Uh, so people could stay healthy for most of their life and stay active. Uh, whatever that lifespan will be, I think we people can live into the hundreds, 110, 120 that's been achieved, uh, but by very few. Uh, so I see my goal in making this age achievable for anyone. So anyone could at least maximize their potential, live to 120 in staying active. And then we will see, do we want to live longer than that? Well, maybe yes, maybe with new advances in um, research would be able to extend the human lifespan even further. But at least for now, you know, my goal is okay, 220 in great health. Good. Well, you're taking certain exact space, so you've got a great chance of getting there. Um, if that's everything on my questions have you got anything else you'd like to share or like to say well i don't know it's uh, been quite a journey and uh, i guess i'm looking forward to future discoveries and um, ways how we could translate those discoveries into people's health couldn't agree more. That's a fantastic way to end. Thank you, Vera. Uh...